Hello folks. So today we speak about the last eclipse to end this year. And as I mentioned, we've entered the um, Aries and Libra access for the eclipses, where you can experience some changes, some unpredictability, some big shifts also. Yeah, it could be a new chapter beginning, an old one ending. Yeah. So let's talk about November's lunar eclipse. So we have a lunar eclipse taking place in Aries on November the 8th at approximately 10 a.m. UTC in the, in the nakshatra of Bharani at 21 degrees. Rahu will of course cause this eclipse and will be close to the eclipse degree at approximately 18 degrees in Bharani. Now usually with full moon cycles, lunar cycles, It's usually a good time to connect, a good time to reconnect also. And here you will be compelled to do that because we have both Venus and Mercury sitting in Vishaka, in Libra. And the controlling planet of Vishaka is a retrograde, Jupiter. From Libra, obviously, both of these planets, Venus and Mercury, are aspecting this full moon in Aries. But there may be some caution and there may be some reservations with people during this time. Just with people generally and certainly with relationships. We have Saturn's 10th aspect, very closely impacting Venus and Mercury in Libra. We also have Mars in retrograde at this time. And that's important because we have to see, we, we have to see where the ruling planet of Aries is because that's where the eclipse takes place and the ruling planet of Aries, Mars, is in retrograde in Gemini. So we need to see the strength and the position of Venus and Mars. Mars being the ruling planet of Aries, Venus being the controlling planet of Barani. Aries is the first house of the natural zodiac, so many people can experience new beginnings now but after an ending of sorts, right? We are, after all, talking about Parani. Now, due to the strong retrograde energy of um, Mars, as well as Jupiter being retrograde, um, you may be going back to something, reconnecting with someone also, um, or something, someone or something that you left behind, or you may be finishing up something from the past. Yeah, because both Venus and Mercury are in Vishaka, connecting with Jupiter. This could be relationships. It could also be connected to travel, right? Jupiter sitting in Pisces. It could be connected to some business renegotiation, especially dealing with money matters. With Mars, the ruler of Aries, also recently retrograde and soon to re-enter Taurus. You could be rethinking matters connected to where Gemini and Taurus fall in your chart. All the major shifts that have just taken place, all the major shifts have just taken place for a completely new lens, for a completely new planetary landscape now, right? Um, but with both Uranus and Rahu impacting this moon, there can definitely be some anxiety, some jittery feelings. Moon in proximity to Rahu could also cause you to be very sensitive to your environment, 
now. Your emotions can also run high with strong reactions. In any case, that's, that, that is what it is with full moon cycles, but especially with this one, with, with everything going on. It's a very potent full moon. It's a very, it's a very difficult full moon. Some of your reactions could also be out of character. So try to be um, compassionate with yourself, if that's the case. Um, with Saturn's close aspect to Venus and Mercury, there may be some restraint, some pessimism with relationship matters, even some caution, as well as with business dealings too, right? Because Venus and Mercury are are rajasic planets, they, they, they connect with money matters as well. Um, the ability to take decisive action could also prove challenging now, but you can get the help with the strong placement of Jupiter and Pisces by seeking advice from professionals, lawyers, counselors, business advisors. Uranus close by suggests that sudden shifts could take place now very quickly. Venus is moving away from the sun and soon it will be out of combustion. So this is a positive sign for relationship matters. Yeah. Though at the eclipse moment, you could be feeling hopeless in this area of life with Saturn's close aspect there. It is a good time though to reconnect with old friends. It's also a good time to travel. Um, in fact, long distance travel can bring some space, some clarity. And if you cannot get away physically, switching off, switching off through some kind of spiritual practice is also, it's highly beneficial now. It's a good time for learning any healing modalities. It's a good time for giving to charity, for going on a holiday somewhere by the sea. Uh, learning a new spiritual practice is also good with a powerful Jupiter. It's good to harness that potent Jupiter energy now. Yeah, Mars's third position from this lunar eclipse is normally auspicious, but it's a retrograde Mars. So you may be rethinking your actions and your initiatives. The other thing I would say about a retrograde Mars, if you are going into a dispute with someone or a fight, or you're starting a lawsuit, or you're doing anything, anything confrontational. Wait for the other party to make the first move. During the Mars retrograde. Yeah. Now the restless energy of the previous eclipse can also be seen now. But there will be some doubt, so the desire and drive to act will get compromised. Which is good. It makes it more, but it does make it more difficult to be assertive. So you, you can, in that way, avoid confrontations and disputes. But again, if you are in a dispute, if you are in a confrontation, let the other party make the first move. Unless, of course, you made the first move before October 29th, when Mars went retrograde. That's fine. Um, your communications can be uh, passive at this time. But if you face your uh, doubts, you can overcome this inhibition. Some unresolved conflict can also resurface now. So see where Gemini falls in your chart to understand this. Of course, this eclipse directly impacts Aries and Libra, but also those who have personal planets close to the eclipse degree. Yeah. So, as usual, if you have a planet in Parani or Vishaka, then that area of your life will be activated and you could see some culmination there. There could be an ending and then there could be a Consequently, they could also be a beginning in the same area. And this doesn't happen um, instantly, right? Because we're impacted by the eclipse one month before the eclipse, you start to feel this energy. And one month after. 
And I would say sometimes even up to three months after, it's quite potent. So if there is an ending, you can be sure that there will be a new beginning also in that area within the three months. So this eclipse falls into the third by the Abharani, which is a Libra Navamsha. So again, we're talking about the Aries Libra getting activated in the D9 also, suggesting some relationship conflict as Mars goes into the Libra Navamsha with the moon at this time. Though with Mercury's direct aspect, the resolution lies within clear, direct, and honest communication. Whatever does come up, though, will be resolved if you just step back from it for a few days. Bharani is what? Bharani is death. Bharani is transformation. Usually for something new to be born, something first has to die. And here I see that there's some connection with the past. The past is coming up in some way. The past that you may have thought was over is coming back. If you can adopt, uh, if you can adopt a new approach to an old problem, you can be successful now. Relationships will feature, um, so will business dealings, contracts, negotiations. It could be in all areas of life. It doesn't have to be business, right? And of course, see what you have following, uh, see what planets you have following in Parani. Um, if Venus is there, this will impact relationships, obviously. If you have Moon there, it impacts your domestic situation, Sun, your life path, or your image. Even if you don't have planets falling there, with, ne with Libra being so charged, you will have to confront and resolve some relationship matter. Um, Saturn's aspect on Libra tells us that it may not be pleasant. So let's talk a bit about Parani, where the eclipse is taking place. Um, Parani supports the following activities. Creative and spontaneous activities. Giving up bad habits. Cutting out any toxic habits. Cutting out any toxic relationships. Starting a spiritual practice. Quitting your job filing a lawsuit but don't do that don't do that now with mars retrograde yeah <laughs> um Bharani's deity is yama so death and destruction are associated with this nakshatra ending of a chapter beginning of a new one as i mentioned um again relationships right we know that there's relationships because even the previous eclipse was all about relationships the october one um, so it's a good time to cut out toxic relationships. Parni is a nakshatra that removes burdens. Eclipse here can remove some burden um, or something that was weighing on your mind. Parni is also associated with cleansing and purifying because the fire element is extremely strong in Parani. There's a contrast here though compared to the last eclipse in Parani in April. Um, on that one we had Saturn's aspect but here we have Saturn's aspect on Libra. This suggests that you would be free to make changes without Saturn's restrictions, depending on where Aries falls in your chart. Um, and equally in relationships, this may mean that you have the upper hand or alternatively, you will give more priority to your own needs rather than your partner's. Parani is kind of a dichotomy in that it also symbolizes Yoni, which is the ability to create. So on one hand, creation, and the other hand, it's death and destruction. Being an akshatra of extremes in the sign of Aries, it can very quickly facilitate transformation pertaining to where it is falling in your chart. So see where Aries falls from your moon and your ascendant. 
and put 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 your energy and your intention to, toward there. Um, it is it is there that you can reinvent your life in some way, and it can happen very quickly. Um, I've of course made remedy videos on each planet, and for the for the eclipses, I always suggest remedy the moon, um, strengthen the moon. Simple things like keeping a light schedule, uh, drinking lots of water, spending more time with family, spending more time at home. So, um, usually, as I said, with full moon eclipses, there's, there's a lot of activity on the out outside level, on the outward level, in the public domain, on the social level. And here, it's going to be doubly true with, with, the, um, with all the action taking place in the 1-7 angle. So learning to balance will also be a theme with these eclipses. You will likely feel very restless um, around this eclipse, being that it's Aries. I, I, I always find that um, eclipses bring some kind of revelation. Um, especially if there's strong retrograde energy associated impacting the eclipse, which we have here. So perhaps what came up um, during the April Bharani eclipse, as well as the recent October one in Swathi, um, that matter will reach some kind of conclusion, some kind of culmination at this time. So, so that's all for now. If you like the video, you know what's coming up next. Don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and share. Thank you folks, all the very best. Cheers.